Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Disney reported earnings this week, and we've now had a few days to digest exactly what happened. Now, clearly the market wasn't happy with what Disney had to say, but I think if you're a long-term investor, there were some positives to take from the quarter. There's a lot of strength in the parks business. It seems like there's a lot of opportunity to grow revenue per user on the streaming side of things, but there's definitely weakness in linear TV and ESPN in particular. So that's what I want to dig into in this video is how to take a long-term view on Disney. Because I think at the end of the day, this company isn't going anywhere. It's just a matter of whether this is a good time to buy the stock or not. My name is Travis William. Thanks for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And I want to start with the financial results. This is just a quick look at the revenue and trends for the quarter. One of the things to keep in mind, and I'll, I'll cover this in just a second, is that Parks revenue is up pretty significantly because the Shanghai Resort was open and is generating far more revenue in the most recent quarter than it has for three years. China had a zero COVID policy, so there wasn't a lot of activity going on in Shanghai. So that had a big impact on results. But you can see revenue was up 13%. Net income more than doubled to $1.3 billion. And free cash flow was nearly $2 billion. But there's a lot more that goes into it. If we go down here to the segment results, Disney now reports just two segments, media and entertainment. So this is all of the studios and streaming TV, linear networks. Revenue was up 3%, so that looks okay, although there's a lot of details to go into in, the, in that. The other thing is parks and entertainment up 17% to $7.8 billion. And you can see here operating income from that segment, $2.2 billion. Just an incredible quarter for the parks and entertainment business. And I think this has become the real foundation for Disney. There's gonna be a lot of changes going on with streaming, with cable, but this business just continues to churn out cash quarter after quarter, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. This is the breakdown of the media and entertainment business. And this is where, this is where we have to take a look at a few different segments. Linear networks is things like ESPN, all of the Disney network channels. Those used to be bundled together and then sold to cable companies. As cable subscriptions have declined and the value of Disney's bundle that it was selling to these cable, cable providers has declined, we've seen revenue fall. So that's because of fewer subscribers and increases in pricing not making up for that loss of sub subscribers. We've really hit the tipping point with that right now where revenue is starting to come down 7% in the quarter. And then you can see operating income dropped like a rock, down 35% to $1.8 billion. This is where I think the linear TV business is just going to have to be a slow cash cow business. It's going to keep being profitable for the foreseeable future, but not nearly as profitable as it was. And right now, this direct-to-consumer, this is where the streaming business fits. It's, this is not ready to take over the profit mantle from the linear networks. So you can see that the loss declined, improved a little bit, to $659 million in the quarter, but still not generating positive operating income. Now there's a lot of pieces that go into that. Disney is starting to increase prices and sounds like they will continue to do that. They're adding more advertising to Disney Plus and Hulu. They're also combining those apps together. ESPN, Disney Plus, and Hulu will be one app and there's gonna be multiple pricing tiers what it sounds like from the conference call is that they're going to raise the price of the no ads tier pretty significantly. And that's to make up for the fact that ads are actually generating a very large amount of revenue per user right now. So this is one of these businesses where you want to see growth. You want to see more growth than you're seeing right now. I'll get to some of the subscriber numbers in a second and the momentum that has kind of been lost there. But the improvement on the bottom line, or in this case, in the operating income line, is going to take some time. Like that's just the reality. This doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take time to adjust what kind of content is being produced, what the pricing model is. Netflix has been at this for a very long time and they've got things kind of honed together. Disney is still only three or four years into this. So we're not at the point where this is a mature business. The market didn't like what they saw with this aspect of the business in particular, but I'm willing to give a little bit more patience because I think Disney still has a lot of great assets on the streaming side of the business. And here's that subscriber number that I alluded to earlier, 
46.3 million in the US. This is where pricing is highest. So that's really where you want to see growth, but it's actually down 1% sequentially. International was up slightly 2% sequentially. So combined up just 1% and Hotstar, which is a very low cost product in India, down 8%. So that's not contributing much of anything at all. That's partly because Disney said that they had spent a lot of money advertising in some of these markets where the revenue opportunity was relatively low. So wouldn't be surprised to see them kind of pull back from these markets a little bit. In total, Hulu was essentially flat for the quarter. And here's a look at that revenue per user or in the US pricing was up 20% to a little over $7 per month, internationally up 6% and Hotstar down 20%, only 59 cents per month for Disney plus Hotstar. ESPN plus was up 2% and Hulu was a little bit mixed, down 6% on video on demand only and live plus video on demand was up 5% to $92.32. So there are a lot of moving parts here for Disney. I think one thing that we know is that there's a tremendous amount of strength in the parks business. So that's something we can't overlook, that that's going to keep churning out cash year after year. They're making small incremental in improvements, not adding any new parks yet, although I would love to see that on the horizon. But that's going to be a phenomenal business for the foreseeable future. The linear TV business is going to be in decline for the foreseeable future. So profitable but those profits are declining. And the big question mark is how big can the streaming business be and how profitable can it be? This is why the stock has been down recently is because investors are questioning whether the economics of the streaming business are gonna be anywhere near as good as the economics of the linear TV business. Now, long-term, I think they will be because you're cutting out a middleman in the process. The cable company who was bundling things together, Disney can do a lot of that bundling itself. That's part of why it's moving ESPN plus Disney plus and Hulu into one app. It's basically trying to make its own bundle and then it's going to be able to slowly ratchet up prices over time. But you can't announce a product like this for five or six dollars a month like they did with Disney plus and then increase prices 10x to 50 or 60 dollars a month. The process of increasing prices and adding ads takes time and that's the phase that i think we're in with disney is the company knows what it needs to do to increase revenue per user but it's going to take time to get there now what i would like to see a little bit more of is more subscribers i think there's a lot of opportunity to grow there maybe something like the bundle with hulu and espn plus will allow the company to do that but that's the thing i'm going to be watching in the future i think the pricing is a pretty known strategy and we know kind of what's going to go on there but can Disney attract more subscribers and be more at the size of something like a Netflix? If it can long term, then you have a company that could be extremely profitable in streaming and extremely profitable in parks and entertainment. That's kind of the ideal scenario for Disney, but we're obviously not there yet. We're in kind of a trough of profitability. But what did you think of results? Leave your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to follow Rev Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.